Welcome back to my blog, .stampwithelaine.com. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to be using uh, uh, the Framelits Envelope Liner dies. Um, you s can see that I haven't even mounted them yet. I haven't got round to using them. Um, but I've been racking my brain trying to think what I could, wh how else I could use these apart from making envelope liners. And um, I came up with the idea of making a little box. So let's get started. The papers I'm using um, are called uh, Venetian Romance and they are really, really lovely. Um, that's the reverse side. So, um, I've pre-cut um, the smallest of the envelope die, which is this one. Um, if you have got a magnetic plate, then this is the formula. You put your bottom cutting plate, um, your cardstock, or, and then your die on top. and um, another cutting plate on top and then you're ready to run it through the big shot. So I won't actually demonstrate that but, it, but in order to save time I've already cut out four pieces. Then I bring in my uh, Simply Scored board and basically, um, I score half an inch at the bottom here, and it's about a quarter of an inch, just where the indentation is, there and there. And then for the envelope, just from point to point for the flap. So I'll go through that again. So use the thicker end of your stencil because you're doing um, designer paper and the paper is a lot thinner and it's more likely to tear if you press too hard. So rotate it 90 degrees and with a straight edge butt it up to the end of your um, scoreboard or rather the beginning of your scoreboard. You score half an inch on that side and then score from point to point where the envelopes are for your flap. Next you want to cut off only one side of the flap so we'll cut off the right hand side of the flap on each one but you can speed things up by doing it two at a time. And we'll do the same with this one. So then you'll be left with four pieces like so. Next you'll want to cut this um, corner off so you turn it upside down with the flap facing you and you just cut this at an angle and then cut the rectangle off so you're left with a flap like that. The next thing to do is to put sticky strip on the flaps right where the score line is. Well really just shy of the score line. like 
so. Then you want to um, reinforce all your folds. And do the same for all the other pieces. So <clears throat> you really need to decide which side of the box you want to uh, expose. So I think I'll go with this colour, which is Tangerine Tango. So we take off the sticky strips and you try to align those with the line of the flaps at the top so they're all the same and butt it up so it's flush. And that's the last one. And for the final one, you just fold it down and fold that over. Voila, you have the box. So the bit, this is the top with the envelope flap, flaps, so that will be the top of your box. And this is the bit that you're going to have to glue. So we'll use, just use our trusty Tombow. you're going to say oh but then that doesn't join up we'll have a cunning plan for the base of the box you need to cut um, <coughs> two pieces of cardstock two and a half inch square one will go on the bottom of this and the other one because that's pistachio pudding that will go on the inside so all you have to do is just pop a bit of glue on there and place it inside your box and that will keep your base rigid and you do the same for the base Voila, there you have it. Okay, so in order to close the box, all you have to do is um, tuck it and fold it so it goes down like so. Okay, then it's ready for to make your belly band. For the belly band, I cut it at approximately one and a half inches by the length of an A4 sheet. And then using this punch, you can start punching out The decorative edge. So I'll go and do that and I'll be back shortly. Now that I've punched my decorative border what I do is I butt it up to the simply scoreboard like so and then just um, with this being prop proper cardstock I use the finer point and Just go over like that so that it makes it easier to wrap around the box. And you don't want it too tight. 
so that um, it will slip on and off the box easily. And just the last one to do. Now I'm ready to wrap it round my box. And there's a bit of excess there so I'll cut that off to make it neater. Okay, so I'll just pop a bit of sticky strip on if I can find the end. And take the protective sticky strip off and make sure that slips on and off still easily and then I'm all ready for the flower So here's the flower we made from our tutorial last week. So all I need to do is just pop a few dimensionals on the top of the box. And then just pop my flower on top. And there you have it. So I hope you liked today's tutorial and come back for more inspiration next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.